Now the sermon this morning is entitled God's Expectation Beginning the New Life. What God expects from a person that comes to Him. He who follows me, Jesus says, must deny himself for who he is, pick up his cross, and what? Follow him. Follow him. Praise God. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 4. And you find it with an amen. Every time I sing that song, it reminds me of Brother Philip. You know, <laughs> God has appointed time for everything. Yes, he does. And Brother Philip's no longer with us today because he passed away. He was 34 years old and he passed away. And we were coming, coming down the road here one day and we had already bought this lots and Brother Philip says, Brother Robert, do you have a lawnmower? I said, yeah. He said, well, let's go get it so I can cut that lot. It looks real bad right there. All that weeds are growing and everything. That's our lot, brother. He says, that's where we're going to put our church. And I says, well, you really think so, brother? Yeah, I know so. Okay. And we had already put a sign Alpha and Omega right there just to claim it. <laughs> and when he got the, 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 the mower, and he came and mowed all the lot. And uh, this was his favorite song, one of his favorite songs. He didn't know how to play bass. He learned it through hearing Brother Hermano Beto Vasquez's music. I don't know if Brother Fernando rem uh, remembers him. He came to visit us and play the accordion. But uh, this all happened back in the 90s, 90-something. But anyway, we were privileged to to have him, you know, during that time. He had been gone out and come back and got, you know, rededicated his life to the Lord and then he passed away. Mm. So I'm sure that he's in a better place. Hello. The book of John chapter 4, verse 10. The word of God says, And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Thank you, Lord. Brother James, you want to lift me up in prayer? Amen. Father God, as we come together, dear Father, in the assembly, dear Father, we pray, God, that this word, dear Father, be nourishment to our spirit, dear Father, that it replenishes us, dear Father, that it fills us up, dear Father. God, for the weeks and the times ahead of us, dear Father. Dear God, we pray for the pastor. Well, God, Jesus is going to bring the word, dear Father. Father, that you bind up all the tactics of the enemy and all the distractions, dear Father, that might come his way, dear Father, so that your word can come out with clearness and clarity, dear Father, and it be seed into this soil, dear Father, that this hot fallow ground, that it may bring forth more fruit, dear God. So, dear Father, forgive us our sins and our trespasses, dear Father, and our transgressions and iniquities, dear Father. And Father, we just pray, God, that you just be glorified this morning, God, because you are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega, and we thank you for being a part of our lives and for saving us and setting us on the straight and narrow, dear Father. We are so grateful and honored to be called your children. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 You all may have a seat. Amen. Praise God. You know, this woman was only thinking about her own expectations. Mm -hmm. And her expectations were that Jacob's water, or Jacob's well, was not going to end. But Jesus says, whoever drinks of this water, uh -huh. he's going to be dry. And he's going to thirst again. Yes, sir. But if you take some of my water, it's a forever thing. It's an eternal thing. It's living water that'll flow from your belly mm. and turn into a fountain that you will not be able to control. Even if you wanted to control it, you couldn't control it. Mm. Because bigger is he that is in you Amen. than he that is out there in the world. Yes, sir. Praise God. That's a good word. In other words, Jesus was telling the woman, 
there is a free gift from God that you do not know about mm. which is already present in your sight it is for you if only you knew we were sharing this morning in the Bible study about you know Oh, I heard that Jesus did this. I heard that Jesus did that. And you know, yeah, we when I was a kid, you know, I heard about Jesus. And we always hear that we hear about Jesus, but do we know him? And this is a lady apparently heard about that there was a Messiah coming. She had heard about Jacob. She was more confident in Jacob than in the Messiah. <laughs> and Jesus told her this is a forever thing. Praise God. If only she knew. But God is a sinner's hope and he is not lost. <coughs> whatever we do and whatever we think, remember that God is not lost. Mm. He's always there. Yes. But God has the power to open a door and he has the power to close a door. Yes, he does. In other words, God has a lot of power. Praise God. That's a lot of power. But there is such a thing as dry bones that is bones without life that need water. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. But a life without purpose is already a, lot, a dry life. Una vida sin propósito ya es una vida seca. Porque si no hay propósito, pues, ¿qué vida va a haber? Amen. Amen. So purpose is, is important because your purpose becomes your priority. Mm. We musicians, okay, what is the purpose of playing the music? That becomes our first priority. Amen. Amen. If we're doing it for ourselves, that's going to become our first priority. If the purpose is to is to be exalted and to be being a look at me, that's going to be our priority. But if our purpose is to glorify God, that's going to become our priority to glorify God. Amen. So we all need to have a purpose in God because if we don't have it in God, we're going to have a what a dry life. He says, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel, do you think that dead bones can live? Mm -hmm. yeah, boy. Ezekiel said, well, you know, Lord. You know all things. He says, well, command those bones to get up and rise. Command them to live. He says, I will, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and get those dry bones. Uh -huh. mm. And I'm going to breathe my breath into them bones. And I'm going to create in them a new body. Mm. You want a picture of the resurrection? Read the book of Ezekiel. When you die and you're resurrected, that's what's going to happen. God is going to give you a glorified body. And Ezekiel's he was probably in awe because he was seeing that revelation to the dream that was so real to him that it became a reality in the case of Lazarus. When they came and told Jesus, he's already dead. He's a, he's a dry ground. Yeah, yeah. Lazarus is dry ground. He's, he's been dead four days. Jesus says, Martha, If you knew the gift in you. Jesus tells Martha, if only you believe, you will see the glory of God. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, do you believe that I can raise Lazarus up? Oh, Lord, I, I would believe that you could raise him up, but if you would have been here when he died. Yeah. But. <laughs> that is the way that I think. That is a, my understanding that if you're here with present, I mean, I believe that you can raise him up if, he, if you're here before he dies. Right. Jesus tells her, I am the life and the resurrection. 
Lazarus, come forth. He commanded him to come forth from out of the grave, from out of dry ground, to be able to become a living being. That's right. Praise God. That's God's glorified grace. And one of the greatest virtues is hope. Remember the book of Corinthians tells us, and there abides faith, hope, and love. So it's one of the three things that abide in a Christian. We were speaking about this hope in the Bible study. About the hope. What, what hope do you have that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? If they ask you, uh, what hope do you have? What is your reason for you believing in Jesus Christ? What is the hope of glory in you? That's right. Can we, are we able to answer, well, I had an experience with God. I had an encounter with God. Encounter. That's good. I remember that I was a nobody, but now I'm, I'm somebody. Yeah. Not because of me, but because of He. Who resurrected me. Who gave me that living water. I'm not dry no more. Praise God. So we're speaking about this hope. What is it that we're hoping for to take place in our lives today? Have you ever thought about that? What are, what are we hoping for that can take place in our lives today? Are we looking for a husband? Are we looking for a wife? Are we looking for children? Are we looking for a home? Are we looking for a future? Are we looking for a God? Are we looking for money? Are we looking for material things? What is our hope? What are you living for today? Because a lot of people, they their hope is when they get that income tax, they're going to do this and they're going to do that and this and that. Right. No. Amen. Cuando agarremos el dinero que nos viene o recibimos una herencia, vamos a hacer esto y vamos a hacer el otro y vamos a hacer el otro. Amen. Esa es la esperanza que tenemos en el dinero. And that is the hope that we have in the money, in the material things. But what, what kind of hope do we have for our lives? ¿Qué clase de esperanza tenemos para nuestras vidas? If we were to die today, would we know that we would be with the Lord tomorrow? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the, Lord. the way things are happening nowadays, tomorrow is unpredictable. Oh yeah, that's a good word. Yeah. Como están pasando las cosas ahorita, no podemos nosotros, este, no sabemos qué esperamos mañana. Puede hacer una muerte de repente, puede hacer que vamos a tener una herencia, puede hacer que que, que algo bueno va a pasar en nuestras vidas o puede pasar a ver que algo va a pasar malo en nuestras vidas are we ready? estamos listos para cuando llegue el tiempo even if we do receive any, a big inheritance are we ready to handle it? because people very easily forget about God when they have money they have power amen yeah, that's right. God gives us what he thinks that we need right. to get us by through today right. because he knows our heart. That's right. And God is not going to give us more than what we can handle. That's right. We have to remember that. Okay. So what is it that we're hoping for to take place in our lives today? Have we considered all who he is? Let's go to Acts 17.28. When you find it with an amen. 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 It says, For in him, in who? In Christ. There you go, brother. Mm. All right, somebody's been reading their Bible. Yeah. For in Him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also His offspring. 
Amen. Amen. So in Him we live. In Him we move. In Him we have our being. To be able to do what God has called us to do. Amen. Are we aware, are we aware of where, where and who we are and in having a walk worthy of the calling? Or of the calling that God has placed in our lives? He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 1. We got it? 13 and 14. In whom we also trusted after that ye heard the word of what? Of truth. The gospel of the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Do we believe? Yes. yes. We've been sealed. The Lord. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of the glory of God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Jesus says that on this rock I will build my church. This means that Jesus doesn't want us to build our own house. He doesn't want us to build our house in the sand, as a matter of fact. He wants us to build it on the rock. And how do we build a house on the rock? Do we have a reason? For the hope that is in us. Yeah. Is your house established on the rock? Do you know who you are in Christ? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes. Because to know who you are in Christ is establishing your house on the rock. And when the wind comes yeah. and the hell comes and the storm comes and hits that house, it's not going to yeah. tear it down. Yeah. That house is still going to be standing. Right. Amen. Because that word has edified that house. That word has built that house. That house has become a rock. So how are we in that area? If the enemy comes into your life, to tries to come not into your life, because if you have Jesus, he can't come in, but in, into your mind, and try to harass you, tries to deceive you, to tell you lies what are you going to come up to him with if the enemy were to come and attack you this day what would be the, your answer to him for the reason that is in the, the, the hope that is in you how would you react because the enemy comes in the mind yes. and tells you to do things that you really don't want to do, but that you can't help yourself because you're not strong enough to overcome it. Huh. ¿Verdad? Y si no tienes la fuerza del Señor, el enemigo viene a tu mente, si no tienes la fuerza para poder vencerlo, you're going to go with the flow. Well, this is what Robert would do. Well, this is what James would do. This is what Christina would do. But what would Jesus do? <laughs> what would Jesus do? What did Jesus tell the enemy when he came in the desert, tempting him? ¿Qué le dijo el Señor Jesucristo a Satanás cuando vino el Satanás a tentarlo en el desierto? No de solo el pan vivir el hombre, más de toda palabra que sale en la boca de Jehová. Man shall not eat of bread alone, but of every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. And he defeated the enemy with the word. He spoke the word, and the enemy, the word of God says that the enemy left him for a season. Amen. 
so that he would be able to do what God had called him to do. That is the reason why God equips us. That is the reason why God wants us to build this house upon the rock. Yeah. So that we may be able to be equipped to confront the enemy whenever he comes. Not to run or draw back. Yeah. But to press forward and confront him like David. The word of God says David ran towards the giant. He ran towards the problem. He was anxious. He was excited to see what God was going to do. Yes, he was. Do we get that excited when, we, when a problem comes into our lives? Yeah. And do we get excited and jumping up and down and say, Oh Lord, how are you going to fix this? Glory be to God. Thank you. Huh? Yeah. Nos excitamos cuando viene un problema enfrente de nosotros. Y brincamos y saltamos y dijimos, Dios, ¿cómo vas a hacerlo para arreglar esto? Amen. Praise God. Lord, I can't wait. I'm excited. I can't wait to see how you're going to handle this problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or do we react? What am I doing wrong, Lord? Why does this always have to happen to me? Oh, I'm not going to be amount to anything because I never can do anything right. That's where the enemy wants to have you. Yeah. And then he wants you to accuse your wife. Uh, it was her fault. Uh, yeah, but if you wouldn't have done this, or if you wouldn't have done that, or your husband. Yeah, but it's his fault. Si él no fuera hecho esto, si él no fuera hecho el otro. Amen. That's what the enemy wants you to think. But what, does, what is God looking at? What's God's expectation of you being a Christian? ¿Qué es lo que espera de Dios de ti para que tú seas el cristiano que Dios quiere que seas? What does he, he tell Job? Stand up like a man. Right. Adorn yourself with majesty. Right now, man. With beauty. Amen. Amen. Have a good attitude. That's right. Have a good conduct. That's right. Have the word of God. Be dressed in those garments. Raise up like a man. Stand up for the hope that is in you. Amen. Satan, you may want to crush me. You may want to oppress me. You may want to hold me against these two walls and crush me but it's not going to happen I had a dream one day that I was being crushed between these two walls the enemy is sleek place, this thing, place that thing in my mind these walls were closing in on me and I was right there and I was being crushed and I said Jesus and everything disappeared That's right. praise the Lord Everything disappeared when I called out on Jesus. Praise the Lord. Okay. On this church I will build my rock and the gates of hate will not prevail against it. The psalmist says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. But my question to you this morning is, does God's word have a place in your heart? Hay lugar de la palabra del Señor en tu corazón para, para Él. Amen. What did Jesus tell the devil? He says, He's coming, but He doesn't have any place in me. <laughs> Praise God. Do we have a place in our hearts for Him? Are we doers of the word or are we hearers only deceiving ourselves? Amen. Do we actually do what the word tells us to do? Are we excited to come to the house of the Lord? Or do we say, well, you know, I don't feel like coming to the house of the Lord this morning? Say it. Uh -huh. 
But if they say, let's go to the mall, how do I look? Oh, well, I better put on a shirt. Better put on another shirt because this one's not presentable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Come on, we're going to Walmart. Huh? We get excited. Can't wait till I get up work. Can't wait till I get home. Oh yeah. Oh, we're going to the restaurant. Come on, 12 o'clock. We get excited in those things, but we can't get excited in going to the house of God. When we mention, let's go to the house of God. Oh, man. I wonder if it's already through. Si voy a esta hora, pues me quedo más tanto hina. No tengo que estar mucho tiempo ahí. Oyendo al pastor predicar. Hearing the pastor preach. Preach. The brother says, you know, when I first started preaching, he says, uh, the kids used to love me. Uh, all the all the kids uh, let, let brother junior preach uh, let him preach he says I preach for 10 minutes and then I get down preach for 15 minutes I get down yeah. he says, but when I got to preaching for an hour okay. they didn't want me to preach no more uh, <laughs> he says, don't let brother junior get up there he's going to preach <laughs> he's got attention span he's <laughs> preach it if it cost a lawsuit. What? Preach it. The Samaritan woman was not aware of what she was in need of. Yes. Jesus was what she needed, and Jesus is what we need also. He who has the Son has life. So are we really thankful out of a repentant heart? Or are we still going with the flow? Jesus says, follow me. The new life, a free gift from God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And that's a free gift of God to us. Because during the, there was a time when we lived in hard times, God wouldn't stand with the people. He, he didn't side with the people. He punished the people right there and then. Yes, he did. God said something and you didn't do it. You're, you're a goner. That's right. But he so loved us that he says, I'm going to give my best. Do we give our best for God? Because it should be our first love. Do we give him our best? Or do we give him only seconds? Thirds? Fourths? Fifths? Amen. Do we give him dealers? Yeah. Or do we give him Salvation Army? Oh. How, how much value does God have in our lives? ¿Qué tanto valor tiene Cristo en nuestros corazones? ¿Le damos caro o le damos lo menos? ¿Qué tanto valor tiene? Porque a lot of times, you know, the waitress at the, at the restaurant has more value than God in the church. Ouch. Ouch. Amen. The waitress at the restaurant, oh, she gets five, ten, fifteen. Mm. One look good. I did. <laughs> when we come to the house of God, we go to the, the bill phone, there's a one, there's a five, and there's a ten. Yeah. Well, if I give him the five, no. Ten? Oh, no, it's just no. Mm. Uno. Ten. 
ten. You hit it prophesying now. God loves me. You love God? Oh yeah, I love God. Amen. Are we getting it? Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. All right. So my question is, do we have to hope as our anchor? Come on, man. <laughs> do we have the hope as our anchor? Tenemos la esperanza como la ancla. An unmovable, unshakable, a steadfast anchor. Because God wants somebody that he can put up there to where you're not going to give up. Yes. He told Samuel, he said, Samuel, don't be crying about Saul no more. Yeah. I already got somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Samuel goes, he goes through all of them. They were all handsome. They were all bodybuilders. None of them passed the test. Are here, here comes a little boy with a big heart. Just that's the one. I can depend on, on that shepherd right there. I can depend on David. The lion's going to come. He's not going to run. The bear's going to come. He's not going to run. Here comes the storm. He's not going to run. Yeah. Here comes the fire. He's not going to run. I can depend on him. So I'm going to crown him king. My, my man. You don't know what's happening in your lives. Mm -hmm. You know, you may think, well, you know, I'm just, uh, this is just me. Mm -hmm. But that you is going to get bigger and stronger and better and, and bigger and bigger every day as the days go by. Amen. Because even though our bodies and our flesh is perishing, the spirit is being renewed day by day. day, by day. It doesn't matter what we think, what we feel like, or what we uh, try to how we try to figure things out. That that spirit in us is going to grow. Yes, it is. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to make errors. We're going to make uh, uh, wrong choices. Yeah. But if we have really believed in God and let Him into our heart. That spirit keeps growing. Pretty soon God's going to show you and He's going to real, realize that you, Lord, you know, where have I been? Okay, Lord, now I'm ready to do what you called me to do. Now I'm ready to do your will, Lord. Yeah. Show me what I need to do today. And God will. Let's see what the psalmist says in Psalms 119. Psalms 119, Salmo 119. Lo que dice el salmista. And we're going to go to verse 49. Psalms 119, verse 49. Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. His word is a remembrance for us. We got it? Psalms 119, verse 49. And the psalm is saying, remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to what? Hope. Hope. David goes like this, Lord, don't forget about me and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. For then how am I going to be able to help others and bring it into the kingdom? Uh -huh. The psalmist says, remember your work in me, uh -huh. Lord. 
Remember your word in me so that there, I may have that hope. And every one of us that has that hope in us, that even though the days are going bad against us, even though the things are happening bad against us, we have that hope that everything's going to be okay. That's right. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. We may go through high water or storms or floods or whatever, but we know that everything's going to be okay because we know that we know that bigger is He that is in us than He that is out there in the world. That's right. That's right. Praise God. Aren't you excited mm -hmm. that you have Jesus? Yes. Lord, no. Praise God. Well, let's act like we have him. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> let's act like we have Jesus. Let our attitude be that of a godly attitude of Jesus' attitude. Yes, sir, boss. A character like Jesus' character. Uh -huh. A strength like Jesus' strength. He says, and more things you will be able to do because I go to the Father. Bigger things, Jesus says. Wells you didn't dig. Others dig them for you. Houses you didn't build. Others built them for you. God has all this in place just for you. All you have to do is follow Him. Praise God. God is a good God and He hasn't forgotten you. That's right. He ain't. Amen. I believe. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. Amen. If we don't have that fear of the Lord, why does God have to show us anything? That's true. Si no tenemos el temor de Jehová, lo vamos a usar como usamos la ropa. Nos lo ponemos un día y nos lo quitamos el otro día. If we don't have the fear of the Lord, we're going to use, him, use God as like clothes. Take them off one day and put them on the other day. Amen. So the fear of the Lord is the main thing. Ask the Lord to help us to create that fear in us for Him. God can accomplish a life-changing transformation for all who truly believe. If you believe, you will be transformed to the power of God because the Holy Spirit that is in you will be able to translate you. So let your light shine so before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven to that light that is in you, through Jesus Christ. That's right. And establish a relationship with God by knowing that Jesus is in us. God's promise of His gift, when we come to know it, will cause us to lay hold of the hope set before us. Yes, there is someone someone who has already entered for us. Jesus Christ, our High Priest. Amen. He has entered behind the veil. Amen. And the hope, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil. Mm -hmm. wow. That enters the presence behind the veil. That's the hope that we have. Let's go ahead and stand. When Brother Fernando comes and, and plays a song for the Lord, the altar is open and the altar is abierto for whoever wants to come. Don't underestimate God. He's alive and well today.